Hello, my lovelies. I'm Jenny O, the author with no last name. And today I want to talk about the state of indie publishing in 2021. I have been publishing online in one form or another since the late 90s and early 2000s, an early adopter of fanfiction.net, and have been publishing original work since 2016. I have seen flame orbs, sporking, doxing, and just about everything you can see. The internet has changed quite a bit in the last 20 years, especially when it comes to indie publishing landscape, since Fiction Press and later KDP launched. There is a lot of advice out there about how to indie publish, and does it still apply today in 2021? Let's start with my three disclaimers. Disclaimer 1. There is no right way to self-publish. I honestly do not care how you self-publish. There is no right way to self-publish. There is the way that works for you and your budget. You can publish on KDP or serially on Reddit or whatever your heart fancies. You can pay for a cover or you can make one in paint. I don't care. I don't judge. If someone tries to tell you there is a right way to self-publish, you might want to look at their motivations. Are they traditionally published, or are they trying to sell you something? Disclaimer 2. There are no bad books. There are books that are published too early. I don't believe in bad books. I don't think we should be calling books that don't fit the traditional publishing standard bad. I do think we should say books may be published too early. Maybe the author has written one book and are just learning to write, and instead of editing that book, they put it up and ask people to pay money for it. It's not necessarily a bad book. It's a book that most likely needs a lot of editing. The solution for this is actually simple. Read fiction books in your genre, not writing advice books, traditionally published fiction books. Hire an editor, a development editor who is not a journalist, and wet your fingers off. You might want to put that first book in a drawer and come back to it in a decade. Also, query. Watch videos about why queries are rejected. Querying will help you learn to summarize and write back copy and figure out the weaknesses in your book. I strongly recommend querying, even if you're going to indie publish. I'm not drifting into morality and messaging in books that might be considered bad. I'm not willing to sit here and judge. There are books published that are definitely not for me, and I don't think we should be normalizing some of these messages in them. On the other hand, if they're indie published, most people aren't going to see them, and the view reviewers will um, make it clear if they bother to review at all. Lastly, disclaimer three. There's nothing wrong with writing to market if you can do it. Quickly. Writing to market means writing to Zahn's popular keywords and on their every 90-day algorithm schedule. I think it leads to a lot of disclaimer to books. Hey, if your health is good enough or you have the time, you think you can write, edit, and release upwards of 40,000 words every three months, then good on you. Writing to market is the pulp fiction of the modern age, and if you want to write pulp fiction because you think it will make you money, then that's great. I'm going to sit over here and not sagely and let you get on with it. Please keep those in mind as we go forward. Okay, around last October and November, I was taking part in our self-publish over on Reddit. Ironically, I'd just given some advice to a man who wanted to create an active social reader group around his books rather than make money, which I have experience with doing, and someone had posted a guide on how to maximize Zahn's keywords. I mean, that's fairly nice, and it was around my birthday, and I thought, you know, let's go in and try to put some keywords into, onto my books and see if I can get some more views. I poked about a keyword selector site, wasn't having much luck, so I hopped over to Zahn to do searches myself on keywords I already had. And I'd done searches for things before, just back in May, I'd been looking for mermaid books, so I knew how bad Zahn's search system really was. This time, this time, however, I paid attention to a couple details I hadn't cared about before. How many books Zons claimed they had in the keyword search versus how many unique search results they were showing me. 
one of 16 to 50,000 words and 75 pages. Now, for those of you who can do math, that means they're showing 1,200 unique results out of 50,000. And I knew that they had more than 50,000 in those keywords because my book was ranked at like 13 million or something. So this idea, you could post a book on the Zon and maybe get someone to read it and discover your book organically since 2016 or whenever I last paid attention to how many search pages there were, which was a ton more than 75, had gone from implausible to a downright myth. Just so you know, there are actually 22 results per page. Six of those results are ads in the best spots. The beginning, middle, and end. And the search may or may not actually give you the results you're looking for. If I keep getting fey or sirens when I'm looking for werewolves and mermaids, the search function is deeply flawed. This is more egregiously awful when you remember that the Zahn opened up selling books out of a garage. This site was originally built to sell books, and now, well, you can't find anything unless you know the exact author and book you're looking for. Your chance of discoverability on the Zahn after 90 days is nothing. And when the search of newest will show you pre-order results, it is possible that your chance of discoverability in the first 90 days is also nothing. And all the advice that there many authors are still giving you is geared towards the height of indie book popularity back in 2012 and 2013 on the Zahn, back when the search function showed hundreds of pages of results, not 75, back when this right-to-market idea was relatively new. Now everyone and their mother, and I'm not joking, thinks they can get rich quick publishing books to the Zahn. <sighs> No, just no. Writing isn't and has never been a get rich quick scheme. Never, ever. Not indie published, not trad published, it just isn't. You have to have thousands of consistent sales month after month to keep your books in the top 1,200 of the searches. Most likely being giving your first book away free via price matching by Smashwords and buy their sponsored ads at variable click rate costs in order to be discoverable. So the self-publishing advice for KDP, the common wisdom, no longer applies. This was emotionally hard for even me to figure out. I mean, emotionally hard as I reached inside the octopus with this thief gnawing on my wrist and pulled it inside out hard. I've wrestled with this, because if this is the case, there is no amount of indie blog reviews or book blog tours or make your book cover better you can do to get ahead on the Zahn. They are going to spend all their time and attention pushing the top 100 books in the categories and genres in those publishing pulp books every 90 days and trying to fight back against the spammers taking advantage of their categories instead of creating a fair system or Everyone who posts to KDP is discoverable if the search function and display function is set up properly and everyone plays by the rules and categorizes in keywords, aka tags, their stories correctly, aka an AO3 for original fiction, a site that doesn't exist. I had to throw out everything I thought was true and turn it on its head. The Zahn has created, with purpose and intent, an algorithm system that may get the money and throws those with disabilities, or those unable due to jobs or other reasons, to not publish a book every 90 days, under the goddamn bus. And yet, still sells the myth that you too can be successful through KDP, even though you can't get your friends and family to post reviews of your books, and other authors aren't supposed to review your books either, and you can't pay for reviews, oh, and we've got people taking their books down and selling them to someone else who changes the title, slightly changes the covers, and we post them as new books. We will gladly pump up the books of blatant scammers and plagiarists rather than give everyone a fair system. So, if you can publish a book every three months, hit the right keyword fad at the right time, and you think you can put out 20 books in five years and are willing to give thousands of dollars worth of books away to people who are most likely never going to read them, 
then good on you. There's nothing wrong with it. Get on with your bad self. Because that's what everyone from these websites to our self-publish is going to tell you to do. And they aren't going to tell you that indie self-publishing on the Zon is basically so flooded with everything from fiction to empty journals to coloring books, all using the same categories and keywords, it's almost impossible to get ahead. It is the slush pile made visible. Myself, who has carried the water of a fandom publishing serially on fanfiction.net and got burned out doing it, We'll be over here with Cocoa Cookies and Sympathy when you figure out this isn't creatively or mentally sustainable. I literally can't do this. I have migraines. It's not possible for me. I also refuse to do it because I have some integrity. A first draft can take one to two months. It should sit for one to two months and then be edited. It can take six months and three drafts to write a story I'm set aside publishing that is up to traditionally published standards. Unless you are a writing machine, and not many people are actually writing machines, it's probably not possible for you either. You have jobs and kids and maybe your own health issues. And I have read far too many of these written in 90 days books before I got wise and they are 99% of them published too early. Or, or, they are half a book to get you by the rest of it in the sequel. Uh -huh. The truth is, if someone gets something for free, they are most likely not going to pay for more books or are a different series by the same author. They are just going to move on to the next free thing unless they really, really love that author and want to support them monetarily. Most don't. Giving away your books for free on the Zon is not going to get you sales, not in the Zon Kindle culture. I don't care what they tell you. Giving away 5,000 books to get 100 sales is not getting ahead. And of those 5,000 free downloads, most of them aren't going to be read, and almost no one is going to leave a review. Look at the review ratios of Lost Leaders to even the second or third book in the series. It drops off precipitously. It is not a winning strategy. The only other way to get ahead on the Zon is going to have some type of celebrity, probably through social media, or being an actor or something, not wanting to be traditionally published and then spend $10,000 on your marketing because social media followers are not guaranteed sales. Trust me on this one, follow numbers do not equal sales. Needless to say, I left Reddit because I had to sit here and figure this out again ironically thinking about the very same method that I talked to with another user a few days, if not a week before. Serial publishing. A method I'd abandoned because it's a lot of work. To me, it's more work than posting on KDP. I had to bite the bullet. My sales were null. I pulled my books out of Kindle Unlimited so I could start posting them to other sites come January when that enrollment period was over. And I started working on a guide called how to be successful when you don't want to write to market, or getting out of the algorithm game. So what is the other method? What is this serial publishing method I'm talking about, and can it actually get you sales? Well, first off, you don't want sales. You want eyes. You want people to be able to find and read your book. This method is something that webcomic artists and people who have taken their extreme AUs of fanfiction filed the serial numbers, and started Patreons are doing. You post something once to twice a week to a place where people can find it. If you get enough readers slash views, you open a Patreon where you offer sneak previews of your work or early access for money. And then when you have a complete work, or in some cases 500 pages, you post it up to the Zon or go through lulu.com and create a solid paperback or hardcover or ebook for people to buy in order to support you. YouTubers and Twitch streamers use this method. And if you are very, very lucky, you will have enough people paying you $1 a month to pay your rent. And if you are very, very lucky, you will have ads on your website bringing in pennies. And if you are very, very lucky, the people will buy your physical book to support you because they love you. Because that is the Patreon, Coffee, Royal Road, fandom style culture. It's something founded way back on LiveJournal and fostered through AO3 and fiction sites and Hiveworks web comments with comments enabled where you are encouraged to create a friendship with your readers versus seeing them as customer reviewers you can't interact with even to say thank you. 
Never interact with negative reviews slash comments ever, no matter the culture, just don't. So if you're publishing, say, a book, you are going to want to be publishing it in multiple places. You're going to want to try publishing it on the biggest original fiction website you can find, or Wattpad. You're going to want to find a serial fiction website for your genre and post it there. You're going to build a website, say, on WordPress and post it there. If you can keep your chapters under a certain word count, you can post it to Reddit on certain subreddits. If you like recording yourself and can't stand the sound of your own voice, you can create your own audiobook and post it to YouTube. If you can find someone that has like a mailing list of indie books being published serially in your genre and they are willing to post your book link in their list, then you want that too. Then you're going to toss up links on Twitter and Tumblr and Instagram. What you aren't going to do is publish your original story to AO3. AO3 is a fanfiction website. While it does have a small original section, people don't go to AO3 for original works. And they have a mass download function, which means if you want to sell your story to readers, it's pointless because they can get it off the website for free with a click. And lastly, AO3 as a fanfic archive is a non-profit. You cannot and must not post links to Coffee, GoFundMe, or Patreon, or whatever your begging for money website of choice is without being against their TUS and putting them in danger of being shut down. You can put a link to your website and have a link to your tip card jar there. However, the more links someone has to click to get to the place to buy your book or give you money, the less likely they are going to click them. You see why I call this more difficult than KDP? Instead of a tri-monthly upload schedule, you are going to be uploading a chapter of your book at least once a week, then blasting it on your socials. This is time you have to take away from writing, or creating book cover, or writing. And if you don't plan ahead, and your book isn't finished before you start publishing it, it is a real hazard you are going to start missing updates, or write yourself into a corner, or make a huge mistake and not be able to fix it. You're going, but Ginny, I'm indie, of course I can fix it. No, okay, so one of the very first pieces of advice I got from the writing community way, way, way back in 1999 or so when I first started getting into the fanfiction community was published is published. Grammar, typos, go ahead and fix them. But it isn't fair to your readers or your reviewers to go back and rewrite something before you finish the story. It's up. It's done. You wrote yourself into that corner, now write yourself out of it. Be a professional. Do not use your reviewers as editors. Trust your gut and firm your spine and write the story you want to write instead of bending to everyone else's demands and desires. In fact, don't do this if you've indie published on the Zon either. If you've published a book, don't edit the entire story and repost it to the same edition. It is going to make all your reviews invalid and no reader will trust you as an author again. You as an indie author have two goals that are much, much more important than sales. Get reader eyes on your books, not your fellow authors and writers eyes, readers eyes, and gain reader trust. To gain reader trust, you need to have a book that's written to traditional publishing standards in an active voice with a beginning, middle, and an end, and characters that are sympathetic, relatable, and enjoyable. Too much exposition or passive voice or characters readers just don't like in a plot that doesn't seem to be going anywhere or have any structure they can find is going to turn off readers. They won't trust you and will hit the back button and go find another book. Sales don't matter because there are so many, many books out there available for free through KDB, Smashwords, Wattpad, and all those little fiction aggregate serial sites. Indie publishing is a slush pile made visible. Because society has made us think anyone can write a book, so anyone and everyone is, even if they really aren't taking the time to hone their skills before publishing. Readers can find plenty of free stories if they look hard enough, and so many of these stories are published too soon, readers' trust in authors, especially indie authors, isn't at an all-time low. Don't be that author. This doesn't apply to fanfic, by the way. Fanfiction, by definition, you cannot ask money for it, because then it becomes copyright infringement. Fanfiction 
I found was a great place to practice writing before I had any original ideas anyways and improve slash hone my skills. It didn't matter if my skills were rubbish, it was free and anyone who read it knew it was free and were okay with it as long as they enjoyed my romantic comedy style stories. And I discovered I could write action and adventure and slice of life and came up with something original and well now my pile of original ideas grows ever larger and my pile of fanfiction ideas that are inspiring these original ideas is larger still. No writing is ever wasted, my lovelies. You want readers to trust you, so your writing has to become your marketing. And if your writing isn't good, then they're just going to hit the back button. So I decided since I do write in active voice, and sure my slice of lifestyle isn't 100% what Tread Publishing wants, but fanfiction aka serial readers crave, and since Zahn is now a pipe dream unless you can write to market, I would return to my comfy zone of publishing serially. It's like a worn out sweater. You know, you should get rid of it, but it's so cozy and you love it so much you just can't bear to do it. I decided I would publish on my website, Ginny the Number Zero, Wattpad, and World Road, a fiction aggregate site for science fiction and fantasy. And because this was a social experiment, I was going to post my things and run and not treat these sites the way they want you to treat them. Like another social media outlet. Now there is something you need to know about websites, especially WordPress. Websites, especially WordPress, are their own little world. You aren't going to get people coming to your site from Google unless you've been linked elsewhere. Or um, have something on your site people are actually searching for very specifically, like a review of a game. WordPress people are going to find you through WordPress Reader. You're going to want to use posts, not pages, and uh, blogs are about dead. Blogs are one of those mid-2000 to 2010 things. It's good to have a website. It is your business card to prove you are you. Don't expect a great deal of traffic. I have no idea where cozy werewolf drama fits on Reddit. Our werewolf people are constantly searching for werewolf horror novels. I don't write that. I don't think writing that is really feasible. Werewolf monster existential horror is more visual and oh my god, so overdone. I get they don't like cuddly, sexy werewolves with super control issues of urban fantasy. My werewolves aren't even that way. They are a found family of siblings that squabble because accurate wolf science. So I didn't post to Reddit. I also planned on doing a YouTube audio podcast thing, but my health interfered. It's on the list. I promise. And I'd see what happened. So it's been close to 20 weeks. We're about halfway through the book, and unless something drastically changes, it's like another YouTuber with a much larger following than mine sees this video and goes, Oh my god, you need to read Ginny's books as werewolves and motorcycles and found family and explosions and slow burn romance. I don't see foresee anything changing with what's going on with my statistical numbers across these three websites. I know. In the serial publishing world, 20 weeks, aka half a book, really isn't a huge amount of time to build a following and get a Patreon and start having people impatient to read the story so they'll buy the book to support you through the Zon. That was not the point of this experiment. The point is to find out where you need to post so you know where you need to put your time into gaining readers who will hopefully support you. Remember, eyes. You want reader eyes on your work. Okay, before you asked, why didn't I use my fanfiction pseudonym to promote my work? Harsh truth number... <sighs> I don't know. Fanfiction readers are highly unlikely, call it 99.99% unlikely, to read original fiction unless, unless it's an extreme AU of the fandom you're already posting in and you decide to file off the serial numbers to start a Patreon and they want the rest of the story even if the names are changed. Because your story is going to have the same character dynamics they love from their fandom OTP. They are there still for the fandom OTP shipping thing. They can find and replace names. It is possible to get readers from your fandom following, but it's unlikely. I mean, yes, Fifty Shades of Grey did it, however, she wrote a fanfic of a fanfic of a fanfic 
took advantage of AO3 marketing by posting 200 words a day of said fanfic, and was a marketer herself. So when she pitched it to an indie publisher in her own country, she was able to go, People want the end. They'll buy the book. Really? See? See my website? She and Cassie Clare and the person who wrote after are unicorns. You cannot hinge your success of your indie writing career on readers who are there for wacky hijinks of a mutual fandom. While my editor and I met through fandom, we are not normal, okay? <laughs> so, because my blog is WordPress, I honestly didn't expect a lot of traffic. I need to readjust my SEO through posting chapters. Not only is this going to take time, most of my traffic is still going to come through the reader. I have 10 people at most, reading on WordPress. And I'm very grateful. That's 10 more people than I had. 10 people is like half the amount of people who have already bought the book. The real advantage of posting on WordPress is by posting to WordPress, you can prove to Royal Road that I am who I say I am and can post to their site. On Royal Road, I have about 30 dedicated readers, which is actually more readers from a completely new set of website goers than who bought the book. This is good. Looking at Royal Road's algorithm structure and the way things are displayed on the website, it is possible to post once a week and get people to see your new chapter before it is buried. Royal Road is heavily science fiction and fantasy though, so unless your book is sci-fi or fantasy, I wouldn't recommend posting it there. The last place is Wattpad. Wattpad purports to be the largest original fiction fic aggregate site on the web with a reported 655 million stories, both original and fan fiction, and 8 million readers. They have an AI that's supposed to push books the AI thinks will do well. Supposedly, if you want to get eyes on your book, you want it on Wattpad. I didn't expect a lot because I had no idea how the AIs work, and their category and tagging system and display function for stories is absolute shit. I have maybe two readers on Wattpad. You see, Wattpad is pulling a Zahn. Instead of creating a category system that's functional and separating out their fanfiction distinctly from their original fiction, like fanfiction slash fiction press and AO3 do, it's all mixed up in a jumble where your tags seem to influence your categories, and they're once again only showing up to the first 1,800 stories in each category. Some show less, some show more. Without aggressive marketing off of Wattpad, just like the Zahn, you aren't going to get readers when you are posting your story for free. Spending money to get people to find a story you aren't charging them for. Oh, this sounds like a winning proposition. I posted every day for a week and didn't get an increased boost in numbers. I refuse to post every hour. I just won't. Wattpad does have a paid program. You have to have two completed books on their site to apply. I'm not there yet. I don't know if I ever want to be there since I use Simon & Schuster. In the big publishers that people know about, Penguin Random House, Hatchet Book Group, HarperCollins, Simon & Schuster, and Macmillan, Simon & Schuster is like one of the smallest groups, and lately their publishing decisions have not been um, great. No, SNS, no one is going to want to read a book by Mike Pence. No, don't give him $3 million, give him ten grand like everyone else. If he earns out, which I doubt, then you won't have wasted over $2,990,000 of your money that could go to so many other authors. You could do 299 other authors' books and Mike Pence. Wouldn't that be awesome? And it's not just Mike Pence. They have offered to distribute some other really not great books to play by people who don't need the infamy. Other publishing groups aren't any better. Disney is actually refusing to pay authors lately because, yes, Disney now has a publishing arm for their franchise licenses. So here we are. The state of indie publishing is completely dismal. Algorithms are consistently stacked against indie authors on the largest sites with supposedly the most readers such as Don and Wattpad. I am not even going to touch Kindle Bella 
because if they can't get the categories and search function of their main site right, there is no way in the name of God's little green apples they are going to get serial posting fic aggregate category and search function right. The Zahn needs to take all the books they've got off their main site and completely and utterly rework everything from the ground up and then, then go through all the book categories to create clear and non-negotiable guidelines about what can and can't be in them, which would take hours, and force authors to categorize and keyword them properly. No erotica and urban fantasy or paranormal romance, for instance. No 107 page books under children's fiction. No letting people invent categories to put their fiction in so they can get a bestseller tag because there's no one else there. Oh, and none of this be selling books thing to other authors to be post. Readers have noticed and they are pissed. Publishing, marketing, and age categories exist for a reason. Zahn needs to use them. I mean, Barnes & Noble's website is just as bad as Zahn's is, so yeah, not expecting much. Wattpad, well, if they want to be taken seriously as a publisher, the fanfiction needs to be its own thing. Right now, it's a major copyright risk. Make sure the fanfiction stays in its own little category. Encourage people to move it to AO3 so it can be categorized and tagged better by fandom. I hate to say it, but fanfiction is probably going to go eventually on Wattpad. Then, then Wattpad needs to rearrange its category and tagging system of whatever is left. None of this first 1,800 stories nonsense. I know, I know, it's more profitable for them to push the top 100. Yeah, whatever. I don't believe that at all. They have a premium membership in ads. They are doing paid books. They aren't hurting for cash. They could rearrange things so more authors could have a chance to be discovered. Right now, if AO3 decided to turn their system and optimize it for indie publishing, I would happily, and I mean happily as long as they took out the download function, publish my books on that type of system. I laid out how the categories and tagging could work and how to succeed, because I used AO3 as an example of how to maximize discoverability. Though, they'd have to actually limit their tagging system because original author tag abuse would be a hundred times worse than fandom author tag abuse. Fandom authors, many came from live journal and at least understand the etiquette and can teach others. Tropes. You tag tropes and warnings and major elements to the story. Not every little thing. If your book is fey and werewolves are just background noise, then tag it as fey and leave werewolves off. This is not that difficult. You get one major genre. One! Romance, fantasy, sci-fi, horror, mystery, literature, memoir, erotica, etc. One! And these follow strict publishing guidelines. So I recommend to find readers and get them to trust you to find the place on the web that is the niche fic aggregate site for your genre and post there in your website. If that's Reddit or Royal Road or I know there are others but there is Google. These places are far more likely to have readers who want to read what you're writing and since they are smaller are also more likely to be coded in such a way people can find you without aggressive marketing. Or you can write a bunch of books in advance and publish them to the Zahn within 90 days of each other. Or try writing 40,000 words every three months. Give away lots of books and possibly not get readers. Your choice. Will you be successful and make money? Um, well, the office manager in me who has dealt in profit loss statements is saying most of these every 90 day writers aren't actually making money. They just think they are. So, no, most likely not. I have yet to see one posting their sales results that I've set there, worked out a profit loss statement, and congrats! You made money! You will get readers. You will get eyes on your work. You may form a group around you that enjoys and appreciates your stories. If you're looking for like 20,000 sales, go traditional. If you just want to write books and not be your own marketer and promoter and back copywriter, go traditional. I know it's a one in a million chance you'll get chosen out of slush, but right now it's more than one in a million chance people are going to find you in the slush pile that's in publishing. A trillion. One in a trillion sounds better. This is upsetting. I wish it was better news. I do. Publishing is a business and we need to treat it like a business and be open and honest about how it is really going. Which includes making sure your books are as ready to publish as possible with the skills you have and can beg, borrow, or steal. So on my website Ginny, the number zero, wordpress.com backslash books, 
link below, there are three post-fiction production guides I wrote last year instead of original fiction to help people who want to publish. The first is, I finished a book, now what? A tongue-in-cheek guide to what happens after your first draft. Editing, querying, trad publishing versus indie publishing, social media, and a very big index of writing advice resources, mostly from Tumblr. Because for writing advice, if you can't find it on YouTube, get the Tumblr. The second book is from my experience as a peer reviewer and development editor called 16 Signs Your Book Isn't Ready to Be Self-Published, and other things you should know. If your book isn't ready to be self-published, it ain't ready to be quit. 16 things to look for in your first draft and how to fix them. Six signs your book is ready to be published and other things you should be aware of, like paying attention to your own journey and things that make readers choose whether or not your book is for them. The last guide is the one I mentioned earlier, how to be successful when you don't want to write to market, which outlines in detail everything I went over here. You don't have to take my word for it. Dig around and find out for yourself. Right now, I'll continue to post to Wattpad, and maybe after Rodeo's one is up, I'll try their paid program. That's going to be a year. I'm not going to rush things. Hoping to get to the audiobook of The Lone Prospect here soon. Maybe if my videos were shorter. <laughs> As always, my lovelies, take care of yourself, bless, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.